Okay guys, I came across another video online, actually three of them online, showing another free energy device supposedly using two shaded pole motors like you see here. Now the shaded pole motors can be found in microwave ovens. That's one right here. This is 120 volt. And over here is a little larger shaded pole motor. Now in the videos that I viewed, it shows two shaded pole motors tied together like you see here. This is just a copper wire, making sure each one of these is snug against each other. In one or two of those videos, the same exact shaded pole motor is being used. In the other video that I saw, it says to use one shaded pole motor, which operates at slightly higher voltage than the other. Now in that video, one had 240 volts on the side of it, and the other one said 220 volts. But in that video, which was extremely suspicious, would led me to believe that both motors were exactly the same rating, 220 slash 240. That, let me disconnect this, we'll put this back in a minute. Alright, that's how I did it here. One just rotates the other. There was a label right on the side of the shaded pole motor in the video that states to use one higher than the other. It was showing 240 volts, 50 hertz. But if you look very carefully at the motor, which he claims to be a higher voltage than the other shaded pole motor, you're going to notice that that label on the left side of it was sliced with a razor blade. And the reason why that was sliced, and you can easily tell it was sliced, because the labels normally have rounded corners on them. And you'll see the right side of the label, the corners are rounded off, and the left side, it's a straight cut through. And it happens to be a cut right before the 2 and 240 volts. I looked up the part number. You could see part of it was exposed. It said 6309-230. When I looked it up, I came across a SP6309-230 shaded pole motor made by Johnson Electric. And the rating of that motor is, as shown on the label, 220 volts forward slash 240 volts 50 hertz. Now you know why the label was cut before the 2 and 240. Because he didn't want you to see that it's actually a 220, 240 volt motor, just like the other one was in his video. So for all practical purposes, both motors are the same. Even though two motors are never identical, this might have a resistance of 120 ohms, this one might be 95, but they're both designed, in this case, for 120 volts, or 130. Now the capacitor value that was shown for this experiment in one of the videos was a 0.68 microfarad or a 684 capacitor. Now this is a 400 volt capacitor right here, rated at 0.68 microfarads. Very hard for you to see, of course. Maybe you can see it there, I'll move it. 684, and under it it says 400 volts. Now I could use an X2, I got a whole bunch of capacitors here just to let you know, and this is just a very small pile of my capacitors. I have a whole bin filled with type X and poly capacitors and mylar capacitors, so I have checked a whole bunch of values. So this way you don't come back later saying you used the wrong value. One of the other videos out there shows a capacitor, whoop, just like this one. This one right here is a 10 microfarad, which we're not going to use but it was a blue capacitor and the writing was all blurry, you couldn't read it. So based on the other two videos that showed the capacitor value, I was able to get a range of what kind of capacitor values I should be using. What I did is I took these two bobbins. You can see there's black marking paint halfway across to show the rotation over here, halfway across, and we just spin it like that it rolls nicely. All right. Now the principle behind this, supposedly, is that when you connect the two motors together with a capacitor in parallel across one of the terminals, you'll be able to spin this like that and it will increase speed until it goes full speed. 
Now we're going to try that. Now remember, when I make these videos, the reason why I make these is not necessarily because I believe this will work. It's because I would like to save people the time and money from trying these experiments themselves. So I'm going to do it right now. I showed you what I'm using. So if it works, great. I'll tell you the model numbers of each one of the shaded pole motors. I'll give you the exact specs so you can duplicate this yourself. If it doesn't work, you're going to know to save your time and money. So let's give this a try. Now if you look at the motors, there's three terminals. And the reason why there's three, that's just a center tap. It might be hard for you to see. I'm going to go in the light here. The center tap of the winding, the loop is pulled up and it's not cut and it's soldered to the center terminal. Now we're not going to be using the center terminal. Maybe you can see it there. We're only going to be using the outer terminals where the full 120 volts would be applied. Now the way it was set up, one terminal, all right, we're going to connect that there, was connected to the other terminal at first, the bottom terminal, all right, let's lift that up so you can see, right here, the bottom one, connects to this bottom one right here, so there you can see it. All right, let me lay that back down. We're going to take this capacitor now, the 0.68 microfarad capacitor, and connect it in parallel with the two terminals where these two wires are connected. Let me lay that there. Let me connect one there. And this is going to go to the other side over here. All right. As you can see, let me lay that down. What I'm going to do now is give this a little spin like they demonstrated. All right. All right, we don't see anything going on here. Now what they showed in the other video was to leave the capacitor in parallel, which is fine, across this winding here. And we're going to take these two leads and we're going to reverse them. Once that's reversed, when I give this a spin, it should kick in and speed up. Let's give it a try. Okay. Let's put this one now back on the bottom. So now the top goes to the bottom and the bottom goes to the top. Capacitor right here. Everything's in the view, hopefully. No games. Now I'm going to give this a spin. Now in the other videos, as soon as they spun this, it sped right up and it was up and away and he gets a light bulb and puts it on there and shows you 220 volts. So let's give it a try. Wow. Working really well, right? And let's keep going. And as you can see, it is not spinning into motion. Just for the hell of it. Let's try it again, just to be sure, on the other side. Back on the bottom. And it does not work, as expected. Now, more than likely, the way this was done was using a very, very thin enamel wire, like you see here. This is like a third, it's very small, it's probably a 34 gauge wire. And they put a very thin wire there. Using the right background, it is extremely difficult to see that wire. So you can just connect the wire to one set of terminals, and when it starts to spin, as soon as you go to do this, somebody's going to be over there off the screen with a little dimmer control supplying 220 through that little thin enamel wire to the motor. And when you give it that spin, they'll start slow, and they're going to speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. And then you're going to be like, wow, look at this thing. It's spinning perfectly. Once this is up and running, then they could tap on their 7-watt night light or another bulb to show you, look at this. It's generating power. It's spinning. And the light is on. So unfortunately, once again, it's another scam video. 
It makes no difference if you're using two of these. They're rated at 220 or 240 each, or 120, 130 each. It'll work exactly the same way, supposedly, as it was demonstrated in the other videos. So now you know by watching my video that you should not even bother wasting your time trying to duplicate what you see here. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.